Chapter 16, Trouble at the Fort. During the spring of 1779, in less than five weeks, the command of Fort Oswegatchie changed three times by order of General Haldeman. In April, Captain Fraser replaced Ensign James Davis, but was succeeded by Captain Daniel Robertson in May. The garrison was reduced by necessary detachments to only 20 men, who constantly were required on the ramparts. Indians came and went, never staying long because the fort could provide no fresh meat for them, and there was very little rum. On May 20th, Haldeman wrote to Fraser, As no supply of provisions has yet arrived from Europe, I recommend it to your particular attention to use all your endeavors to spare this article. I conceive it possible that during certain seasons, the savages and perhaps the soldiers might supply themselves with fish and game so as not to draw their full allowance of pork. Meanwhile, Captain Robertson, with a company of the Royal Emigrants, was on his way to the fort. Captain Fraser directed Lieutenant Richard Houghton of the 53rd Regiment, commanding a scout of Indians, to proceed by the most secret and expeditious route toward Fort Stanwix. Fraser ordered Houghton to harass the rebels. Should you not find an opportunity of annoying the rebels nigh that fort, you will endeavor to bring the Indians farther down the Mohawk River, where you are to distress and alarm the rebel settlements as much as you can, without exposing your party to any risk of having their retreat cut off. You will prevent the Indians under your command as much as possible from ill-treating any of the rebels they once make prisoners, and you are positively to forbid their hurting women, children, or men unable to bear arms. Houghton left Fort Aswagachi with 152 Indians, including a party of Mississaugas who had just come from the Mohawk River, where they had killed six rebels, 60 Indians from Kanawaga and the Lake of the Two Mountains, 35 St. Regis Indians conducted by Ensign Johnson, and 20 Indians from Fort Aswagachi. Orderly and attached to government, the Aswagachis, with their superior knowledge of the country, were considered the best scouts. Robertson and his company of royal emigrants relieved the detachment of the 31st Regiment at Fort Aswagachi. At 3 a.m., June 10, 1779, Fraser, in a report to Lieutenant Colonel Campbell, told how at dusk June 9th, a rebel scout of 60 to 80 Indians fired two discharges and captured a soldier, who was three minutes before in his barrack. Then they gave two death whoops, Fraser wrote. Houghton's party returned to Fort Aswagachi with seven prisoners and eight scalps. Fraser reported to Haldeman, I stationed all the Aswagachis that were not fit for active service in the most likely places for discovering any scalping parties. Notwithstanding these precautions, a scout from Fort Stanwix got in at dusk the evening of the 9th, close by the fort, and fired two volleys at the garrison, but without doing any hurt. They, however, caught a soldier who had gone a few yards from the fort, contrary to Captain Robertson's positive order. As they appeared to be considerably strong from their fire, it was not judged prudent to pursue them immediately in the dark. Early the next morning, a party of soldiers and Indians followed their tracks to the shore, where they had embarked in canoes. Houghton, after returning to Fort Aswagachi, went immediately to Montreal. Among his prisoners, according to Fraser, was a very intelligent rebel sergeant named Bogart. Fraser was suspicious of the Indians' loyalty. He said, I am certain that there is an agreement between the Indians not to discover each other's scouts, nor to attack each other. It was the same in the last war, and neither English nor French ever got good of them when by themselves.